Okay, good morning again. Uh, welcome to our session in Strategic Cost Management. And this is Chapter 12, your reference, Quantitative Techniques for Decision Making. <clears throat> the expected learning outcomes after uh, reading the whole chapter are the following. Explain the rationale being, uh, I mean, been using quantitative models for planning, control, decision-making, and decision-making. Uh, Private in decision, I mean, been using quantitative models for planning, control, decision-making, and decision-making. Uh, Private probabilities in decision-making, use payoff tables in decision-making, determine the expected value of perfect information, describe and prepare decision tree, discuss the benefits and limitation of decision tree analysis. Properly apply the concept of a decision tree analysis. Describe other quantitative techniques such as simulation techniques, Monte Carlo technique, and sensitivity analysis and queuing. State the nature and application of linear programming. Apply linear programming techniques using graphics, simplex, and uh, the graphical uh, method. <clears throat> Define program evaluation review techniques or PERT and then discuss and properly apply the basic underlying concept of PERT. Enumerate the benefits and limitations of PERT. Describe and prepare a Gantt chart. <clears throat> Discuss the benefits of GAN chart, apply EOQ, and compute reorder point, and in safety stocks. Okay. Uh, our subject is strategic cost management. <clears throat> and yet, uh, we have to deal with quantitative techniques that can be used for uh, planning and decision-making purposes. Aside from this subject, uh, the other, or this course, the other courses that also teaches quantitative techniques are the management science, uh, TQM, and operation management. So. This is one of uh, the integration of different courses uh, having the same topics that can be used in different fields. So, dito, we will be using quantitative models or techniques uh, that can be applied in cost management. Because basically, uh, or primarily, an accountant normally is hired to prepare a financial statement or financial report for the company. And uh, inherent to that function is the accumulation of cost uh, in order to determine the annual cost or annual uh, performance of the company in terms of managing the cost. However, uh, aside from that function, accountants are also expected to provide guidance for management uh, in their decision making. And it includes uh, quantitative information needed by the management for them to make their plans or formulate their controls over their operation. So uh, with that situation, accountants are also expected to have broad knowledge in quantitative methods or quantitative techniques because uh, not everything can be explained by accounting uh, models. Some may be uh, explained through quantitative models. So in so that's the reason why we need to have 
uh, topics uh, about quantitative models for us to provide this information to our management. And so, uh, aside from that, qualitative models also uh, are used to provide information that are not yet existing or uh, predictive in nature. So, normally management would like to have information of the future. And since quantitative models provide predictive data or information, these are uh, used by the accountant to provide this future information. And then, uh, these quantitative models can also be used, or the concepts with, uh, in each of the quantitative models can also be used in uh, accumulating the cost, which are the primary function of the accountant. For the purposes of uh, determining whether the, the, the system or the process that he is being or he is applying is actually functioning well. So with the use of quantitative model, accountants were able to get feedback or corrective actions in their system so that they could be able to generate the correct or accurate cost information. Here are the commonly used quantitative models and we will be touching most of the models here. Probability, payoff or decision, payoff tables or decision tables. Uh, value of perfect information, decision tree, learning curve, simulation technique, Monte Carlo technique, sensitivity analysis, queuing, linear programming, PERT CPM, GAN chart, inventory modeling. Regression analysis and present value concept may be thoroughly discussed in the other chapter. Okay, let's start with uh, probability. Uh, <clears throat> management are always uh, faced with a situation that they must have a decision or they must make a decision. However, decisions are based on the information that management have on their hands. And normally, uh, management are uncertain whether the future is what they expected to be. So if that is the case, uh, their decision is based on uncertainty. But that is not always the case. There are, there are situations na yung management they have information about the future and they are so certain of what will happen in the future and therefore their decisions are based on certainty. But that is not always the case because uh, just like the normal situation, parati pong uncertain ang future. Even if you have the full information of the future, sometimes things may happen uh, not on what we expected to happen. So therefore, there is still uncertainty. So the normal scenario is management are making decision on uncertainty. And with that, we need to have some uh, way of measuring the certainty of the future or uh, an event. And that is uh, the use of probability. Because without probability, how can we measure the certainty of the future or something 
So probability is just a value of confidence or measure of confidence whether the that event will occur or not. So if that is the case, 100% is equivalent to 1 and less than that are all the other probabilities. So there is no such thing as 150% uh, certainty. 100% certainty is equal to uh, very sure that the event will happen. Will happen. So walang 150 to 100%, 100% certainty lang. So 100% or below. So therefore, probability is, or the value of the probability is between 0 to 1. There is also, I mean, there is, uh, The value of the probability is also between, I mean, uh, should, will not ever be less than zero. Wala rin pong negative one probability or negative 99 probability. It's this always between zero to one. Okay. So we may have 50%, 40, 30, but never negative or more than one. Okay, before we go to the application of probability, we need to first be uh, acquainted with the terms used in probability. And that is, uh, I mean, these are the terms mutually exclusive, joint probability, conditional probability, independent and dependent. So when we say mutually exclusive, two events are said to be mutually exclusive if they cannot occur simultaneously. Okay, so in your reference, you have an example there, the uh, tossing of a coin. Uh, it is impossible to have both sides when the coin uh, is dropped on the ground. So, impossible head and tail ang nalabas doon. Unless mabiyak sa gitna yung coin. So, that is not possible. So, the head or the occurrence of the head and the tail are mutually exclusive because they cannot occur at the same time. Pag sinabi naman po joint probability, two events, I mean the probability of the two events that will occur. So, meron din daw mga situation na two events may occur and we can compute their probability by combining them and we call that combined probability as joint probability. So, if you have two sets of coins or two sets of dice and you wanted to compute for or determine the probability of having two face or two heads or two tails or uh, two any size of the dice you can simply compute for their joint probability or simply combine the probability of one uh, event to another in among conditional probability is the probability that one will occur given that the other has already occurred. So meron din daw pong situation na ino yung ibon. Meron din daw pong situation na uh, an event will occur provided uh, another event has occurred already. So, hindi mangyayari yung isang event hanggat hindi nangyayari yung isa pa. Kaya, that is conditional. And we can compute for the probability of that conditional event. 
and that is what we call conditional probability. Two events are said to be independent if their occurrence has no effect or the occurrence of one has no effect on the probability of the other. <clears throat> Yun daw dalawang coin na tinosmo, whatever is the result of the first coin uh, has nothing to do or were not influenced by the second coin. Walang effect. So therefore, the occurrence of that, the two events on the coins are independent from each other. Kung merong effect or there is an influence of the occurrence that is a dependent uh, event, de dependent event. Kasi meron siyang effect or influence of the occurrence of the other event. <clears throat> So these are just a hint. Uh, two events are said to be independent if their joint probability equals the product of their individual probabilities. And two events are said to be independent if the conditional probability of each event equals its unconditional probability. Okay, we have here types of probabilities. Uh, objective probabilities are calculated from either logic or actual experience. So for example, if you have a coin uh, based on its physical appearance, it is impossible to have both sides at the same time. So therefore, there are only two sides of the coin. There is a 50% chance of getting a head and 50% chance of getting a tail. Walang probability yung other sides. Unless pag toss mo, naipit yung coin, tumayo siya. So there's another side. So magiging 31 over 3%. Uh, 1 over 3 na yung probability niya. But normally, if that, uh, that will not always happen. So it's either head or tail. So uh, how did we able to arrive at the 50%? Well, logically, we were able to calculate it by experiencing that there is only two sides of the coin, either head or tail. Uh, yeah, that is an objective probability, 50%, 50%. Pag sinabi ng mga subjective probabilities, these are estimate based on judgment and past experience of the likelihood of future event. Say, for example, daw yung ating mga uh, forecast about whether there will be a, a, a storm or uh, whether it will be sunny on a specific day. So, yan naman, based on judgment, even the the the, ayan, the path of the storm, they can also uh, track it based on probability that the, the storm will uh, pass through a certain points. Okay, so yan naman subjective because but that is based on our judgment. Sabihin mo, Last year, this is the path of the storm, or this is what would happen on this particular month. So I expect uh, uulan on this particular month. Diba? Ganyan yung sa weather natin. Eh. Ang, ang expectation natin, every starting May, tag-ulan na because of our experience. Or, nakita mo makulimlim, then based on your judgment, it will rain. But that is not always the case or that will not always happen. Sometimes malinim lang pero hindi uulan. So that is a subjective probability. Okay. Uh, probability can be presented in, in two ways. It's either discrete or continuous distribution. 
Pag sinabi pong distribution, this is just a manner of presenting the data. Uh, pag sinabing discrete, specific point yung probability mo. Unlike yung continuous, there is a lot of variations from different probabilities. And that is from 0 to 1. Okay, uh, yung mga other bullet points, these are just examples of uh, each type, discrete and continuous distribution. Uh, the point is, for discrete, uh, specific yung point ng distribution mo or yung value ng distribution mo as compared to continuous distribution. I have here a picture of a sample of a continuous and a discrete uh, distribution. So, uh, for discrete distribution, as you can see, identified niya na ito ay 1, and then 2, and then 3, 4, 5, and so on and so on. So, hindi mo makikita dito yung 1.1, 1.2, or any probabilities between 1 and 2 because it is uh, explicitly or specifically identified yung point niya is for 1, for 2, for 3, and 4, and so on. Unlike in a continuous probability, there is a continuous probability in between probabilities. Ano daw? Between two, 3 and 2, there is 3.1, 3.2, and so on, and so on. It, it is a continuous probability. So in short, yung probability distribution is just uh, the, uh, uh, different ways of presenting the probabilities. It's either discrete or continuous. Okay, let's have our application of probability uh, in SEM. I think you have this also in your reference this illustration pa yung corporation hold on to Okay. Uh, again, you have the copy of this illustration on your reference. Payong Corporation is considering two new colors for their umbrella product, either sky blue or baby pink. Either can be produced using the present facilities. Facilities, period. Each product requires an increase in annual fixed cost of 400,000. The product have the same selling price, 100 pesos, and the same variable cost per unit of 80 pesos. After studying past experience and similar product, management has prepared the, fo the following probability distribution. So this one is not a continuous probability, but a discrete probability because uh, kita mo naman yung specific point of probability. 0, 1, 2, 4, walang 1.1, 1.2, and so on. So discrete probability po ito. Now, uh, the selling price is 100 pesos. The variable cost is 80 pesos. So therefore, ang ating CM, or contribution margin, is 20 pesos. And our fixed cost, the annual fixed cost, is 400,000 pesos. So we were asked 
which product should be chosen among the objective, uh, assuming the objective is to maximize the expected operating income. So what are we going to do here is uh, to simply multiply the possibilities of demand uh, for each probability. Ito, itong, mga probab itong mga demand na ito, these are just an estimate based on experience or maybe past data. And uh, itong mga probability naman na ginawa nila is also based on experience or estimates or based on their past data. So at 5,000 demand, there is zero probability that the umbrella will be bought from us if it is colored blue or sky blue. But there is 1% probability that the umbrella will be bought from us if it is colored pink. Okay? For 10,000 demand, 1% probability for sky blue, 1% probability for pink also. So logically, ang gagawin mo lang, multiply the event or the numbers of units demanded, demanded by each probability of each type so that you can compute for the total demand for each uh, color of the umbrella. So the resulting figure is 30,000 units for sky blue and 30,500 units for uh, baby pink or pink umbrella. Okay, so if we don't have yet the table below, initially, ang iisipin mo, okay, we seems like uh, we'll have a higher units to be sold under pink color. So it seems like unang sagot natin ay yung pink agad. But be careful, baka... Uh, hindi magkaparehas ng CM, so therefore, hindi automatic yung higher numbers of units that you were able to compute ang sagot. Because, baka magkaiba ng CM. But, since based on our given, parehas lang ng CM, so parehas lang na magiging effect niyan sa net income, we will choose the higher uh, value in terms of units, and that is pink. So to test whether that assumption is true, we will apply yung mga amount natin. So for the sales, variable cost, you simply multiply the selling price and the variable cost per unit, and then deduct, you will arrive at your contribution margin, deduct the fixed cost, so you will arrive at your operating income. So remember yung ating uh, methods of analyzing incremental analysis and uh, ano isa? total project analysis. So ito naman, ganun ang ginawa natin, isang total, we compute for the total amount kahit pa yung fixed cost is irrelevant because we don't, I mean the fixed cost doesn't change so, irrelevant sana yan sa decision natin, pero we wanted to use total project cost analysis, kaya isinama natin sa analysis niya natin. So, operating income is 210. Kung incremental lang yan, we will simply use the change in the CM. Since parehas lang naman ng CM per unit, we will only get the incremental uh, difference in the total CA, and that is 10,000. And if you will observe, oh, parehas lang din ng effect sa net income. Yung change in CM is also the change in net income, and that is 10,000. Okay? So, sa probability problems, uh, you just simply multiply the given demand on, on its probability and then compute for the uh, the value of 
what is being asked. If it is a unit or numbers of uh, pieces or uh, even the amount, you sim whenever you are given probability, you simply multiply the value to that probability and then arrive at the 100% total of that probability. So again, kita mo naman dito, from zero to one siya, walang one point something uh, or negative, it's always between zero to one. And uh, if you will add all the probabilities, it will always equals to one, 100%. Impossible nga na magkaroon ng more than one, one point something. Walang ganong probability. Okay? So, yun din yung isa sa hint mo how to be able to know whether tama yung ginagawa mo is to add the total probabilities and it should be equal to 100. Okay. Uh, what are the complications in probability? Uh, ito yun. Yung whenever you are given probabilities and you are asked to compute for their joint probability, meron ka lang gagawing operation on that probabilities para mag-arrive ka sa joint probability na yun. And your knowledge in your management science is very much needed in this uh situations. For sure, na ituro ito ni Ma'am Angel sa management science. So, the joint probability for two events is equals, equals to the probability of the first event multiplied by the conditional probability of the second event given that the first has already occurred. Okay? So, multiply lang. The probability of B multiply by the probability of A provided B has occurred equals their, their joint probability, probability of A and B. Okay, pwede siya magbalik that. If you wanted to get the probability of A and B, pwede mong pagbalik at pagbalik ta rin ito. Yung probability of A multiplied by probability of B provided that A has occurred equals the joint probability of A and B. So, dito ka lang magkakaroon ng complications sa probability if you are asked to compute for the conditional and joint probability. Okay, the probability that either one or both of two events will occur equals the sum of their separate probability minus their joint probability. If you are asked to compute for uh, the total probability of two events and that two event is not mutually exclusive, meaning there is a chance na magsama yung dalawa, sabay, you have to deduct or remove yung probability of that uh, having the same event at the same time. Okay? If hindi mutually exclusive. But if it is mutually exclusive, you simply add the, their probabilities. Kasi imposible silang magsama. So, meron ka lang minus kapag hindi sila mutually exclusive. Okay? I think that's the lesson for probabilities. Let's now go to the payoff tables and we will still be using our knowledge about probability on this uh, quantitative models. A payoff table presents the outcome or payoff of a specific decision when certain state of nature events not within the control of the decision maker occur. So we have here two uh, terms that we need to uh, remember because we will be using these terms sa mga susunod pang mga quantitative models. And that is the payoff and the state of nature. Yung payoff is the benefit or the income or the advantage that 
a decision maker will get uh, in each corresponding event. So in short, each event, I meron siyang uh, benefit or pay off na tinatawag. Imposible na zero yung effect non otherwise, huwag na nating isama yung event na yun. Kasi wala naman palang dagdag or bawas sa atin, walang effect yung event na yun. So each event should have their specific payoff. And then that event uh, is termed as state of nature. Ibig sabihin, yun na talaga yung, yun yung status niya, wala tayong control over that, hindi natin siya mababago. So, uh, we don't have a choice but to put or assign a value to that kasi uh, possible, nat <coughs> possible natin siyang makaharap or possible siyang mag-occur. Kaya we need to assign uh, a value to that. Otherwise, pag di mo yan nilagyan ng value kasi at nangyari, uh, walang effect. Hindi ka, hindi ka kumita, hindi ka na naman malugi. So, dapat lalagyan mo lagi siya ng value, yung state of nature na yun. If it is zero, you may also include that value, yung zero. If it is negative, negative, ilalagyan mo pa rin yung amount na yun. Okay? So, we have here our example for payoff tables or decision tables. A dealer in luxury yacht may order zero, one, or two yacht for this season's inventory. The cost of carrying each excess yacht is 50000 And the gain for each yacht is 200000 The situation may be described by a payoff tab table as, as follows. Okay. Yung yacht is not too small para mag-maintain uh, ka ng maraming yacht. Uh, yate ito. And then, it needs a special uh, warehouse. Hindi mo siya pwedeng ilagay sa loob ng bahay. You need to put it on the water. Kaya, there is a high cost of carrying excess yacht. And that is 50,000. So, nagre-rent ka doon ng space in the ocean for you to maintain your yacht and you have to pay 50,000 so that is the carrying cost of each yacht and then if you will sell it you will earn 200,000 hindi na binigay yung selling price hindi na rin binigay yung variable cost but you are given maybe a, a contribution margin or its net income already uh, na 200,000 each Okay, yun yung pinakatubo mo, 200,000 each. Okay, and then we have three state of nature. It's either there will be zero demand or one demand, isa lang ang may gustong bumili, or two demand, merong dalawang gustong bumili ng yate. And we will now apply yung natutunan natin sa probability na we have to simply multiply the probability. Okay, there is a 10% chance na zero ang demand. There's a 50% chance na may bibiling isa. And then there is a 40% chance na may bibiling dalawang yate. Okay? Now, if we decide not to maintain a yacht, wala tayong i-manufacture na yacht, wala rin tayong ibibentang yacht, ang mangyayari, at nagkaroon ng zero demand, de okay lang, wala tayong lugi, hindi tayo nag-maintain, wala nga lang tayong kinita. Okay? If there is one demand, may gustong bumili isa, Pero wala naman tayong manufacture, so wala tayong kinita. Wala din naman tayong, again, 
minanufacture, so wala rin tayong kinikerry, zero din yung ating 50% ay 50,000 expenses. Wala rin nga rin tayong kinita. So zero. Okay, we will earn nothing if we will not uh, manufacture a yacht. So ganun din sa explanation niya sa two yacht. We will not earn something, we will not pay anything because we, don't, we do not maintain any yacht. Although there's a demand of two, wala naman tayong maibenta. At wala rin naman tayong minimaintain. So zero income tayo when we decide to produce zero. Okay? Now, when we decide to produce one unit and there is zero demand, wala bumibili, therefore we have to pay 50,000 because we have to maintain that yacht. Kaya negative 50,000 tayo dito. Wala pang benta, pero kailangan natin magbayad kasi excess yun eh. Zero lang ang demand, meron tayong isa, so may excess tayong isa. So we have to maintain it. Now, kung may isang demand at meron tayong isang inventory, then makakabenta tayo. At kikita tayo ng 200,000. At dahil sobra, ay walang, walang sobra, Eh de, wala tayong i-maintain na excess yacht. So wala tayong 50,000 na babayaran. Kumita lang tayo ng 200,000. If the demand is 2, is, this one is better than the other one. Kasi may sobrang demand, kaso wala kang alang maibenta. May kulang kang isa. At di ka nag-manufacture dahil isa lang ginawa mo, de, meron kang uh, isa lang na income and that is 200,000. Walang 50,000 na expense kasi wala namang sobra. Kulang pa nga eh. Okay. Pagka naman tatlo ang ginawa mo, tatlong pirasong yat. Oh, sorry. This one is two. Sandali ah. Okay, pag ang ginawa mo naman, uh, minanufacture natin is dalawa. And walang nag-demand, walang bumili. Therefore, we have to maintain two yat. And therefore, we have to pay two fifty thousand, which is equals to 100,000. Pag isa naman yung bumili, dalawa yung inventory natin, we will earn 200,000, but we have to pay for the excess and that is 50,000. So yung 200,000 natin, mabawasan ng 50,000. Kaya wabit ko na lang. Kung dalawa naman yung bumili, de, lahat ng paninda natin na bibili siya, 2 units ang ating available, 2 units din yung binibili, so you will earn 400,000. Okay? So that is the payoff for each state of nature. So we must decide whether zero tayo, we will produce zero, we will produce one, or we will produce two. So ang gagawin mo, multiply uh, each amount doon sa probability distribution natin. 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0 0.4. So for decision to zero, uh, uh, decision to produce nothing, we will have a total expected value of, of course, zero. But we arrive, multiply. Huh? 0 0.10, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 times 0, 0, 0, equals 0. If we decided to produce one, uh, the expected value is 175. And that is uh, 0 0.10 times 50,000 equals 5,000. 0.5 times 200,000 equals 100,000. And 0.4 times 200 equals 80,000 for, for a total of 175. So, in expect natin in average, whatever happened, whether, whether 0, 1, or 2, in average, you will earn 175,000.
average ha, average now if we decided to produce two the expected value is 225,000 simply multiply so pwede ka na ngayon mag-decide saan mas malaki yung posible nating kitain at uh, na-consider na natin lahat ng probability wala naman tayong naiwan and this is 100% probability already so whatever happens 0 1 or 2 kahit alin din naman mangyari we will earn 225 if we will produce 2 units of yen okay so ang decision natin is produce 2 because the expected value is higher than the two other options. So, uh, the use of expect, uh, I mean, payoff table is to simply assign a payoff for each state of nature and then multiply the payoff in the probability. Next is expected value of perfect information. In our previous example, uh, the one who is selling yacht, wala tayong information whether uh, zero ang demand, one or two ang demand. So, of course, kung alam na alam natin na two ang demand for the coming year, of course, we will decide to produce two because siguradong sigurado tayo, we have certainty that the demand in the future is two. So therefore, we should produce two. But again, like I've said, uh, we always have uncertain, uh, I mean, the future is always uncertain. Hindi natin tiyak. Kaya, uh, if there will be a chance that someone will tell you an information that is perfect, meaning siguradong sigurado siya with, with complete certainty, then you may be, uh, I mean, you may think that, uh, I mean, you may thought of paying that information para uh, ma-apply mo yung decision na kailangan mo. Di ba? Pwede mo siyang bayaran. And therefore, there is a value kapag meron kang perfect information uh, on hand. Kaya, yung mga informations na yan may value yan. So we need to take care of all those information kasi someday uh, you might be needing that, that information and that has a value to you. Okay? And that is the concept of expected value of perfect information. Because of uncertainty, sometimes management are willing to pay for the information just to get the accurate information. So, EVPI is the difference between expected value without the perfect information and the return if the best action is taken given perfect information. So, dito sa previous slide natin, a previous example natin, the expected value here of 225,000 is without perfect information. Kasi kung may perfect information yan, eh di sana 400,000 ang sure nakikitain natin. Because we don't have any perfect information, we assume the expected value is only 225,000. Okay? So, the expected value of perfect information is the difference between with and without the perfect information. So, balikan daw natin itong example na to, ng uh, the one who is selling. Yeah. Okay. The expected value without the perfect information is 225,000. Uh, The same computation as previously sa payoff table. Now,
if for example someone will provide us an information about the future and uh, we were given the uh, information let me just double check this one on. Okay, we were given the information kung ano yung mga uh, best action that we can do in each state of nature. Given the same probability, uh, we will simply get or choose yung best action natin. So for zero yet, ang best action natin is not to produce because we don't have any demand for it. And then, if there is one demand, the best action natin is to simply produce one. And then, if we have two demand, the best action natin is to produce two. So, kung yan ang gagawin natin for each kind of, or each state of nature, because we have a perfect information whether we will have one, zero, or two, then the payoff or the expected value will be different. And... Therefore, ang total niya is magiging 260. You again, simply multiply it by the probability. And the difference between 260 and 225 is 35,000. This is now the value of the perfect information. If, if someone will be able to tell us with complete accuracy that the demand for the future is 2, we are willing to pay up to... 35,000. Okay? If someone will tell us that the future demand with complete accuracy is only one, we again can pay up to the maximum of 35,000. Even if it is zero, pwede tayo magbigay hanggang 35,000. Okay? At least we are sure. You know, if if hindi mo naman yun nalaman, tas nagproduce ka, you may be able to incur a higher loss uh, than paying thirty five thousand. Eh, kung zero ang demand, tas nagproduce ka ng dalawa, di ba? Ang talo mo nun, one hundred thousand. Kung para sa thirty five thousand, you pay for the information thirty five thousand. Okay, so in short, yung expected value, you just have to put value in the information. And that is by getting the difference between those without and those with perfect information. Next is decision tree. An analytical tool used in a problem in which a series of decisions has to be made at various time intervals, with each decision influenced by the information that is available at the time it is made. Uh, <clears throat> yung na-introduce sa atin na state of nature will still be applied in the decision tree concept or in the decision tree model. Uh, and each state of nature, we have to compute for each expected value. Okay, balikan natin tong illustration on pay of table. So here we have learned that each state of nature, meron siyang expected value, 160, 75, negative 10. So the, game, the same concept will be applied in decision three, that each state of nature must have its expected value. For us to be able to determine or make a decision 
uh, by comparing the expected values. So uh, instead of putting it on a table, like what we did in the pay of table, so decision three, uh, we will do it in a, a series of decisions. Parang, kaya siya tinawag na tree, parang puno. Merong mga branches, we have decisions and state of nature and branches. And your decision is influenced by the information or uh, the value of the expected or uh, the expected value in each state of nature. The decision mo is influenced by the expected value in each state of nature. Okay. So ito daw yung steps. First is identify the points and decisions and alternatives available at each point. Determine uh, the point of uncertainty and the type of range of alternative outcome for at each point. Yung mga state of nature na yun. Ano-ano daw yung mga possible uh, ano, uh, event doon. Estimate the probability of different event or result of action. So, apply uli ng probability. Again, para ma-measure natin yung uh, uncertainty or certainty. Estimate the cost and gains. Ito na yung pag-apply ng expected value and then analyze the alternative. You have to choose the highest expected value, of course, o yung mas may advantage tayo o yung may benefit tayo. Okay, so in the decision tree, we will be using uh, symbols and graph or pictures or shapes and you need to be uh, aware of kung ano yung mga ibig sabihin nun. So una, we have square and uh, brackets uh, or branches na tinatawag, kaya tinawag na decision tree. We have square, branches, and a circle. So yung circle na yan, possible din na meron din siyang mga branches. So both the square and the circle may have their branches uh, individually. Now, anong ibig sabihin ng square? That is a decision. Meaning, if whenever you see a square, you have to choose between your alternatives, and that is branch one or branch two. Okay? Ulit, pagka square ang nakita mo, kailangan mong pumili. It's either branch one or branch two. Kapag ka naman circle, this one is a state of nature. You will not choose anything, but you have to compute and assign an expected value for this state of nature. Okay, so whenever you see a circle, expect mo na meron kang kukomputin dahil we have to uh, compute for the expected value of that state of nature. Dito wala kang kukomputin. Pamimili ka lang sa branch 1 or branch 2. Yung circle ang meron tayong kukomputin. Okay. So, in our illustration, uh, in your book, that is on page 348, let me read first the illustration. After several years of supplying gelatin bars to several supermarket chains, the Castillo family decided it was time to shift to another venture in the light of increasing competition from other gelatin manufacturers. They would want to introduce a type of gelatin ice cream. Based on the family accountant's estimate, if the sales are high, the total contribution margin will be 300,000. If sales are low, the total contribution margin will be 50,000. Fixed cost will be 150,000. The accountant estimates the accountant attached a probability of 0.5 for high sales and 0.5 for low sales. Okay. So in that particular paragraph, ang kinonsult lang is yung accountant. And based on his estimate, uh, if the demand is high, we will get 
or earn a contribution margin of 300,000. Pag mababa ang demand, then 50,000 lang. Tapos ang fixed cost is 150. There's a 50-50% chance of getting a high demand and low demand. High sales or low sales. The Castillo family can conduct a survey of various health food outlets to determine the true demand for the new product. And this is what we call yung perfect inf information. Because yung kanina, it's not too perfect because that is just a professional judgment. The reliability of the survey is such that it will signal high sales 70% of the times when actual sales will be high and signals low sales 90% of the time when the actual sales will be low. Ibig sabihin, if the result of the survey says that there will be a high demand for gelatin ice cream, we expect 70% of the high sales is actually high. So, uh, in short, kahit po ang lumabas sa survey ay high, there will be uh, space for low sales and that is uh, 30%. Kasi 70% yung high, so therefore 30% yung low. Now, if the result of the survey is low, there will be a low sales for ice cream or gelatin ice cream. 90% of the time or 90% of that low sales is actually low. And therefore, meron pa time or a uh, certain portion for high sales and that is only 10%. Okay? And sir, but ganun, meron pa rin high, meron pa rin low even if the result of the survey is high or low. Uh, kasi po, hindi talaga perfect yung term na perfect information. Again, uh, uncertain ang future. Sometimes, if you uh, say na sabihin mo, madilim mo, ulan, pero hindi naman umulan, uh, ganun din yung situation na yun. Even if you were able to survey uh, 100%, there will be high sales. There will be some chances or probability na meron pa rin low sales. Pero mas mababa because meron ka ng uh, somehow basis ng high, uh, high sales na uh, in-expect mo dahil doon sa survey. Unlike doon sa information ng accountant, wala siyang basis based on ano lang siya, estimate, and therefore, ginawa niyang estimate is 50-50. So, kung nag-survey ka, mas merong uh, basis yung uh, estimate mo ng high sales na 70% high, yun namang low is 90% low. Assuming that Castillo family bases decision on expected value, what action will they take without the survey? Should the Castillo family take the survey, what should their decision be? And how much will they be willing to pay for the perfect information? Or magkano pwede nila ibayad para sa mga magsusurvey? Okay, let's answer first yung una. Without the perfect information, without the survey, ano daw ang gagawin nila? So we have two options. Whether we will produce or we will not produce the gelatin ice cream. So, yung options mo na yun should be written besides or after the square. Kasi decision yun. You have to choose. Hindi mo siya ilalagay after a circle because it, it is not a state of nature. It is a choice or a decision to make. Kaya sa square siya, after the square. And then, yung whether high or low sales, dito yun sa state of nature. Again, ang state of nature is wala tayong control over that. So, after yan dito sa bilog, sa circle. It's not an option. It will surely occur. It's either high or sales, uh, high or low sales. Okay, and then we write down our uh, probable contribution margin or income. 
if it is high sales, 300,000 daw ang kikitain natin, less fixed cost of 150. Kung namang low sales, 50,000 lang, tapos uh, 150 pa din yung fixed cost natin. So, lugi tayo pagka nagkaroon ng low sales. And then, based on our accountant's estimate, 50-50 ang chance. Okay, so let's compute for the expected value. Kasi pag circle, we have to compute for expected value. And that is 150 times 50% 50, 50 and negative 100,000 times 50%, we have 25,000. So the uh, options to produce has an estimated expected value or has an expected value of 25,000 well, the do not produce option has a zero expected value. Okay, of course, if we will not do anything, they will not make it die. So, comparing zero and, and 25,000, of course, a decision natin is to produce. So, we will not, not uh, choose not to produce. We will produce the uh, gelatin ice cream. Okay, now <clears throat> if we will be asked to conduct a survey, that's another decision to to, to make whether we will conduct a survey or we will not conduct a survey. If we will not conduct a survey, then yung kaninang option natin or yung kanilang decision tree na ginawa natin will apply. Kaya ito yon. Okay? Wala pang survey na gagawin. If we will con uh, conduct a survey, meron ding posibleng mangyari. Okay? So no survey, Ito yung ating probabilities. We will conduct a survey. Uh, there's, there's two kind of state of nature. It's either the result of the survey is high or the result of the survey is low. Okay? Now, if the result of the survey is high, we now have to make a decision whether we will produce or not produce. If the result of the survey is low, we also have to make a decision whether we will produce or not produce. Okay? So, nakadepende ngayon kung ano yung result ng survey dun sa action natin. Pero actually, whether high or low, we will we'll still have to make a decision whether to produce or not produce. Wow. If we will produce under high uh, sales result of the survey, the information tells us that there is a 70% chance that the sales is actually high when the result of the survey is high. And therefore, 30% lang yung chance na low sales even if the result of the survey is high. Okay? So, again, sa, magtatanong ka na naman, bakit sir may low doon, eh high na nga yung result ng survey? That is just a survey. Although it provides you confidence that it, I mean, na-increase na yung confidence mo na high talaga siya, it will not be 100% high. Parati pa may space for the other uh, state of nature because that is beyond our control. But at least it is higher than the estimate before na walang survey, 50% lang. Ngayon na may survey ng result ay high, 70%. Mas mataas na ngayon yung confidence level mo, 70%. And therefore, 30% is low. Sa baba na yung chances ng low sales in a high sales result of survey. Ngayon, if the result of the survey is low uh, and we decided to produce, the probability of having a low sales 
is higher and that is 90 percent indeed in 100 percent because there is still a chance that even if the result of the low sales is i mean the result of a survey is low sales meron pa probability na magkaroon ng high sales which is only 10 percent kasi low na nga yung result ng survey so we expect a higher percentage of low in the low sales survey Okay, so at this point, uh, yung not to survey, okay tayo doon. We were able to provide probability to compute for the expected value. Pero for this one, we don't have yet the probability to be used to compute for the expected value of low sales and produce, and then high sales and produce. Kailangan natin itong compute. Oh, we, can, we need to assign probabilities here. Also, ito, circle din yan, state of nature, we have to assign probabilities also dito sa obtaining a survey. Okay? Again, pag nakakita ka ng circle, dapat merong uh, probability. Sandali lang po. Okay. So again, ha, kapag ka merong circle, we need to assign probabilities uh, in the branches of each circle para ma-compute natin yung expected value. Okay, so paano natin malalaman magkano yung or ilan yung percentage ng high sales in the survey? Sandali po. Okay. Hindi nga yung mga aso. Eh. Uh, to get the uh, uh, probability or yung percentage share ng high sales in the survey and the percentage share of the low sales in the survey, you need to get all the high sales percentage in both uh, results. Whether high or low sales, you need to get all the high sales percentage, and that is 70% and the 10%. Okay? Kasi whatever happened, whether high sales or low sales, both of them has this high sales percentage. So, kwan mo parehas yan, 70 and 10. And then, uh, you multiply it by 50%. Because half of the probability or half of the state of nature is high and half is low. So in short, whether low ang result, 10%, kalahati nun ay 10%. Pag high ang result, kalahati nun ay 70%. So multiply 70% and 10% by 50%, you will get, and add that to, and then you will get 40%. Okay, ulit, uh, how are we going to compute for the probability of high sales result of the survey given na meron tayong mga expected uh, 
probability on each result, uh, we have to get muna lahat ng high sales percentage, and that is 70 and 10. And then multiply it by their share on that state of nature, and that is 50%. So 70 times 50%, 10% times 50%, you will get 40%. So the same concept is applied to low sales. Get all the low sales percentage, 30% and 90% and multiply it by each share in the state of nature, and that is 50%, and then add the two, you will get 60%. Okay, so when you add up the two, 100%. If possibly po na humigit yan ng uh, 100%, because you multiplied it by each share in the uh, possible uh, Result, 50-50, 50-50. Okay? So, impossible humigit yan sa 100%. Next, itong dalawa na to, wala pa siyang probability. So, how are we going to assign the probability of uh, having a high sales and low sales provided that the result of the survey is also high? Okay, so what are you going to, uh, I mean, uh, the, the procedure is like this. Dun sa high sales, you get the, uh, yung given na mataas, and that is 70%. Because if the result of the survey is high, of course, dun tayo mag sa high sales na yun, which is 70%. If 70% is the 50% or half of the chance, having a result of high sales, you multiply it by 50%. Okay? Ulit, bakit natin minumultiply sa 50%? Uh, Nag-result, ang nag survey tayo, ang result as is high, 70% uh, of that result uh, ay high talaga ang sales. So therefore, merong kalahating 30%, I mean low sales. And that is 30%. So you multiply it by its share or proportion dun sa total, and that is 50%. Multiply it by 50%, and then you get also its share sa 40% by dividing it by 40%. So 0.7 times 0.5 divide by its share and the 40%, and that is 8 uh, 0.875. Okay? So, ulit. 70% uh, of the time uh, will be high sales. So, therefore, if 70% yung kalahati nung time, 30% yung isa pang kalahati nung time. Kaya, multiply it by 50%. Kasi tag sila eh. Okay? And, after multiplying, uh, that is the share of high sales in the result of the high sales survey, which is equivalent to 40%. Kaya, you need to divide it by 40%. So therefore, kung nakuha mo na yung share na yun ng high sales dun sa high sales result, uh, para lang makomplete, you need to deduct 875 from 1 to get the share of the low sales. And that is 0.125. So the same concept is applied sa baba, sa low sales. So, instead of then kasi sa book, ang inunan niya yung high sales din eh. Uh, instead of using that, let's apply the same concept. Dito sa high sales, we use high sales as our basis to get the share of the state of nature here. Yung pangalawa. 
So dito, ganun din ang gawin natin. Ang kunin natin is yung 90. And then, multiply it by its share uh, in the state of nature, which is 50%. And then, divide it by 0.60. You will get 0.75. Therefore, yung high sales is, oops, is the difference uh, between 1 and 0.75 and therefore 0.25. Okay, now that we have all the probabilities for each state of nature, we can now compute for the expected value. Okay, ito yung kanina natin, without the perfect information, uh, our decision is uh, to produce and be able to have uh, an income of 25,000. So, wala na yung not to, wala na sa option, yung not to produce. And since we also have a prior decisions to make, and that is whether to conduct a survey or not, we now have an additional branch and an additional square and of, of and uh, also additional state of nature and that is the result of the survey which is beyond our control and based on our uh, computation there is a 40 percent chance of having a high sales survey result and 60 percent chance of low sales survey result and then we will be uh, deciding on each result whether to produce or not to produce. If we will produce, there is a 0.875% uh, chance or 12.5% chance for low sales and high sales, uh, for high sales and low sales respectively. And then, kung low sales naman, ang result ng survey, uh, oops, uh, let's compute first for the expected value under high sales result of the survey and we decided to produce. So, get that the contribution margin for each state of nature and then multiply it by each respective probability we will arrive at 118,750. Of course, if we will not produce, zero income. And therefore, hindi natin yung kukunin. Ang kukunin natin yung expected value na mataas, which is 118,750. So, ang decision natin dito is produce. With the equivalent, with an expected value of 118,750. So, ba naman, uh, we will multiply it with uh, our computed probability. We will arrive at negative 37,500. So, we have the option to not to produce and we will earn nothing. So, comparing between the two, negative 37,500 and zero profit, alin dyan ang mas pipiliin mo? Siyempre, yung hindi mas masakit and that is 37,500 
Okay. Uh, hmm. It seems like the author wanted to simply uh, just follow the procedure, but logically, of course, he will choose zero as to uh, uh, yung 37,000 na uh, negative. But uh, probably yung sa pang reason kung bakit niya pinili yung 37,500 is because uh, you already conducted the survey. And therefore, wala ka ng choice but to uh, produce it because uh, nag-survey ka na. Okay? But logically, ha, of course, apipiliin mo yung zero uh, effect because ito, lugi ka dito, but mapipiliin yung lugi ka. So, masipiliin mo yung hindi ka malulugi. Okay, so let us just uh, accept muna yung uh, presentation ng author. So, uh, Choosing between the two, he chooses to produce, even if it will result to a negative 37,500. Okay? He chooses to produce, uh, it will result to a negative 37,500. So, uh, if that is the expected value of uh, producing it, uh, we can now multiply it with its probability of 60%. So getting 40% of 118 and 60% of negative 37.5, we will arrive at expected value of 47,500. Okay. So, choosing between the two, dahil yun ang susunod natin, square na siya, we have to decide, uh, dito tayo sa mas mataas, 47,500. Oops. Kaya ang decision natin is to obtain a survey and we might be able to earn 47,500. Okay. Now, magkano ang pwede nating uh, ibayad doon sa uh, perfect information or doon sa survey? Uh, according to the problem, the cost of this survey is 20,000. So if we will pay 20,000, uh, and deduct it with our expected value. The net cost with perfect information is 27,500. Kung di naman tayo magkakandak ng survey, eh de, wala tayong babayaran ng 20, then we will get 25,000 na expected value. Okay, so let's check now how much are we willing to pay. Sa 20,000 yun, sayang din yun. Uh, magkano ang pwede nating ibayad? Okay. Now, sumagra yung pinag Ah... Uh, Kanina, yung result ng survey natin is not 100% sure na high sales is actually high and low sales is actually low. Let me go back to that previous slide. Ha? Ito, di ba? The result of the survey is high and yet there is only 70% chance of getting a high sales 
If the result of the survey is low, there is only 90% chance of getting a low sales. So meron pa rin opportunity for high sales under low sales result and 30% chance for low sales under high, high sales result. Now, if we will have a perfect information, and when we say perfect, 100%. So, uh, if the result of the survey is high, dapat 100% high talaga. Perfect information eh. Walang opportunity for low sales. If the result of the survey is low, dapat low talaga. Walang high sales. Walang opportunity for high sales. This is really a perfect information. Okay, now, uh, we will now follow yung kanina nating ginawa on how to assign uh, probabilities on each state of nature. And that is getting all the value of the probabilities, multiplying it by its share, and then dividing it by... Uh, Uh, sorry, no, adding both the shares of each percentage, so 50-50%. So 50% 100, 50% 0. Okay? So to get this uh, percentage share and high sales result, you simply add 50% uh, of 1 and then 50% of 0 equals 50%. Pagka naman sa low sales, so ganun din yung procedure natin, get all the share of low sales, multiply by 50%, will still also arrive at 50%. So ganun din gagawa, gagawin natin dito, unahin natin yung pinakamataas, 100%, multiply by 50%, divide it by also 50%. So, ang result niyan is also 1%. And therefore, zero yung ilalim. So, ganun din sa baba. One ang low, zero ang high. Okay. So, after getting this uh, percentages, assuming perfect yung information natin, you can now compute for the expected value. Okay, so isang 100%, isang 0%. So we will get 100% sure of 150,000 if the sales is high. Okay, so ganun din dito. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Okay, uh, choosing between negative 100,000 and zero, less effect yung zero kumpara sa 100,000. Right? We do not choose to get a loss of 100,000 comparing zero, zero income. Mas gusto natin yung zero. Ito, lugi to eh. So, we will not choose 100,000. So, therefore, expected value here is only zero. Logically, di ba? So, uh, 150 and 0 multiplied by 50-50 and you will get 75,000. So, conducting a survey, we will earn 75,000 with perfect information. Without the survey, we might earn 25,000. So, how much are we willing to pay for the... Ay, but nawala. Go back. Yeah. How much are we willing to pay for the for the perfect information? The difference between seventy five and twenty five, and therefore fifty thousand. So sinising ilang yata ng twenty thousand. Uh, okay na din. It's not a perfect information. Uh, thirty thousand lang. Okay na din. 
beyond 50,000, hindi na okay. So in your book or in your reference, mas simplified yun sa kanya, yung nasa ilalim, 50-50. So kung paano niya nakuha yung 50-50 na yun, ito yun, yung ginawa natin. Okay? And how did he get 75 yung ginawa natin? He chooses zero under low sales because that has a lesser impact in our business. Okay. That is decision three. Next is learning curve. Learning curve. Curve reflect the increased rate at which people perform tasks as they gain experience. And research has shown learning curve percentage to be between 60 and 80 percent. In other words, the time required is reduced by 20 to 40 percent each time. Cumulative production is doubled with 20 percent being common. po, uh, whenever we repeat something, uh, the time that we spend on the next repeat or the second batch is lesser as compared to the first batch or the first time that we do it. Okay? At yung atin daw learning curve is normally 80% or 20% or yung pinaka common. 80% we learn, so therefore there is a decrease in the time that we spent on the second batch of 20 percent okay because we learned it already kubaga mas mabilis ka na kapag ka inuulit mo so first time mong gumawa medyo matagal maybe you spent an hour uh, the second time na ulitin mo siya hindi na siya one hour uh, it will be reduced by 20% and that is ilang minutes yun. Instead of 60 minutes, uh, magiging 48 minutes. Tama ba? 48 minutes. Mas mababa na ng 20%. So kung dinoble mo pa uli, ganun uli. Bababa pa uli siya ng 20% and so on and so on. Okay? That's the learning curve. So in short, uh, whenever you are given a problem about learning curve, expect that the percentage of the learning is always given. It's either 80 or 60 or anything that is in between 60 and 80. Okay? So, yung difference between the 100% that will be the reduction on your time to spend in the second batch. And also... Uh, I'd like you to take note that uh, yung second repeat mo should have the same amount as the previous one. Kaya si tinawag siyang double, meaning if you produce 100 on the first batch, dapat yung second uh, comparison mo is 100 units also. Hindi pwede na 100 and then 50, um, you need to get the proportion. So always doubled lang. So for example, uh, this is also given on your reference on page 352. Given an 80% learning curve model based on the first assumption stated above. The following performance expected during the early stage of the manufacture of a new product. So 80% ang basis natin. So yung first 100 uh, tasks na ginawa natin, we were able to uh, spend 3 hours. Oh, what do you like to do? Uh, sorry, 3 minutes per unit, 100 units, and then 3 minutes for each unit. So therefore, ang, na, 
uh, consume natin to produce 100 units is 300 minutes. So, total nun ay 300 minutes. Now, inulit mo, dinoble mo, dino, doble, so 100 uli yung nadagdag, so therefore 200 units na yung produce mo. But when you do the second batch, hindi ka nagagamit ng 300 minutes sa next 100 because you learned already how to produce it, therefore, mababawasan yung time na ni spent mo. So, ilan yung mababawas? You simply multiply uh, the 3 minute uh, per unit uh, time by 80%. And you will arrive at 2.4 minutes per unit. Okay? The 2.4, if you multiply it to 200, the total amount of minutes that you spend to produce 200,000 is 200,000. 200 units is 480 minutes. Now, in our analysis, yung 400 na yun, 480 na yun, yung first 300 minutes is spent on your first batch. Yung second 100, you only spend 180 minutes. Mas mabilis ka na. Yung una mong batch, 300. Yung second batch mo, 180 minutes na lang. Okay? But of course, we do not compute for uh, the minute per unit on the second batch separately on the first batch. We don't do that. Ang ginagawa natin, kinocompute natin yung average minute you spent for the entire 200 units. So you get 2.4. So that is 480 divided by 200 units equals 2.4. Okay, so this is just an analysis of how did we get 480. Yes, you also multiply 200 by 2.4 equals 480. But in that 480, Yung first 300 jan you spent it to the first batch. And then yung 180 na difference is you spend it to the second batch. Mas mabilis ka na. Okay? Now, if you double it again from 200, ginawa mong 400. Okay? Uh, you multiply the original minute by 80%, you will get 1.92. So multiply 400 by 1.92, that is 768. Analyzing it, yung first 200 batch, or 200 units, that will be your first batch, you spent 480 minutes. Yung second 200 mo, 288 minutes na lang. Mas mabilis pa. Okay? And so on and so on. So multiply it again by 80. In average, each unit uh, requires 1.536 minutes for a total of 800. That's 1,232. 1, that's a 1, 2 na yan. Yung first 400 is 768 minutes. Yung second 400 is 464. Okay, uh, siguro ang dapat mo lang in-note dito is uh, always doubled. So, uh, if this is three, uh, 100, this is good for the 100 units. The second one is also 100 units. If this one is 200 units, the second batch is also 200 units. If this is 400 units, the second batch is also 400 units. Kasi double lang ng double. So if this is 800, of course this one is 800 also. Okay, next is simulation techniques. In simulation techniques, we do not make any computation, but uh, just to simply explain that there are 
uh, problems that uh, doesn't need any computation at all, but uh, may be performed uh, so that we could be able to uh, assign any mathematical uh, formula or logical formula dun sa uh, pagkaka ano natin, pagkaka-experience natin. Okay? So, yung simulation technique, walang specific computation. You need to perform it. And then after performing, you may come up with your own formula for you to compute. Okay? So, hindi muna, katulad ng ibang model na nandyan agad yung computation, and then you apply it to your problem. For this one, uh, dadaan ka muna sa experimentation. And then after experimentation, you will come up with your own formula. So that's why these are the steps in the simulation. You set your objectives, what you wanted to determine. Say, uh, you wanted to determine the time spent for uh, customer service. You need to do an experimentation, a simulation of that particular event or condition or situation and then you measure the time spent you make an observation and then based on your observation kapag ka merong mga inputs like or mga variables na nag nag i-inter aniyan nag aniyan what's the proper term nag interrupt doon sa number of hours or minutes spent for customer service, then you add that on your formula. Okay? So define first your objective, and then while observing or after observing, you formulate your model. You, you define your uh, logical mathematical operation. And then you validate that model. You check whether uh, tama yung mga nakuha mong variable and it will come up on the same result uh, and therefore that will become your uh, formula yung tines mo na yun. and then you design again an experiment, experiment and apply your model or your mathematical or logical computation and then evaluate again the results okay so uh, sometimes kasi uh, hindi applicable ang specific computation sa isang problem because of uh, variability in uh, possible outcomes. Kasi magkakaiba ng mga nature of operation so one model may not be applicable to another kaya instead of applying it you do a simulation technique uh, to come up with your own model. And then Monte Carlo technique is also uh, used in a simulation technique. Uh, dito naman sa Monte Carlo technique, uh, during the process of experimenting and observation, you assign uh, a certain number or value on a particular event so that uh, after accumulating all these numbers, you will be able to come up with the probability of the occurrence of that event. Halimbawa, uh, you are trying to observe, say, a production run and parating may nag occur doon na uh, anong tawag doon? Error uh, or waste or reject. Okay, meron doon parating may error or may reject. And then you assign a particular number for that uh, reject. And then observe mo lang siya, every time lalabas siya, you assign a number, you assign a number. After a while, after the period of observation, 
you will you will me you may be able to compute now the probability of occurrence of that reject item on that particular uh, production run okay so out of simulation you were able to come up with a particular probability of occurrence because of that monte carlo technique you assign numbers or assign uh, a particular value uh, on the occurrence of that event para ma mabilang siya okay next is sensitivity analysis uh, if you could remember our topic on variable costing, that is also one good example of uh, sensitivity analysis. That is uh, analyzing the effect of change in any of the variable, as either in the price, either in the variable cost per unit, or in the total fixed cost, or in the numbers of units to be sold, numbers of hours, direct labor hours or direct labor cost okay and then check the effect of the change so that is what uh, is sensitivity analysis all about you simply get the effect of the changes in the variables either in the price in the in the cost in the numbers of units and so on Next is queuing theory. Queuing is a study of uh, waiting lines. Uh, even the logistic, uh, and yeah, arrangement of a particular uh, operation is also being studied kasi po may effect yan sa productivity of uh, or the performance of the operation yung logistic niya the arrangement of the traffic flow the arrangement of the servers the arrangement of the facility has an impact or effect on the performance both in financial and non-financial aspect okay that is why that is the reason why whenever you enter say a bank meron silang certain arrangement of where are the counters uh, there are also arrangement on the manner of uh, again, making a line before you get to the counter even in the fast food, there, there are also an arrangement of where the counter should be located. And the traffic flow from the door up to the counter, meron din yung arrangement. Because again, it has an impact or effect on the performance, both financial and non-financial, of the business. May meron siyang effect. So that's why queuing theory is also uh, studied so that uh, we can suggest something for uh, the betterment of the performance of that operation. So there are four basic issues in queuing. The input mechanism, the line or queue discipline, the service facilities, and the output. But again, we will not have a very thorough computational analysis on this. Uh, we simply have to appreciate that there is a study or uh, a means to study queuing uh, or the study uh, uh, to study the traffic flow in our uh, organization and that is a queuing theory now so queuing theory kasi there are uh, different types of arranging your logistics pwedeng meron kang single channel in a single server when we say channel that's the uh, traffic flow or yung kung saan lang dadaan yung mga customers natin or yung kahit hindi customers yung mga product natin 
that's a single channel and they are heading towards a single server so imagine a ano na lang, fast food chain now there is only one line and only one cashier that's a single channel in a single server okay so you are expecting a very light traffic flow if this is your uh, logistic or your uh, arrangement of your cashier very light ang traffic flow single channel single server otherwise kung masyadong marami yung papasok masyadong marami yung customer single channel and single server is not uh, appropriate kasi tatambak siya okay and also this is applicable if there is a limited manpower or the performance of the services required for the so for the server is too complicated that only few can provide that service. So yeah, single channel, single server. Pwede rin po na you have a very limited facility, so therefore, wala kang choice, single channel and single server. Or pwede rin single channel, multi-server. For this, for this one, isa lang dadaanan pero maraming cashier. So I guess you were able to experience this one sa isang ATM. Tatlo yung ATM pero isa lang ang pila. So single channel, multi-server. So medyo mabilis ang flow dahil marami naman yung ATM pero isa lang ang pila. Single channel, multi-server. Or multi-channel, single server. Ito naman, maraming pila pero isa lang ang cashier. So, ito medyo uh, complicated siya at medyo uh, you need to have parang uh, rules doon sa multi-channel mo. Maybe you should distribute numbers and then alin ang mauna, kumbaga meron kang sistema doon sa multi-channel mo. Or multi-channel, multi-server. So maraming pila, marami ring cashier or ATM na nag-serve sa'yo. So we will not dwell more on cubing theory but uh, at least you will be able to appreciate there's a study about queuing or waiting lines. We have to pause for a while uh, para... Maricharge tayo ng konti. If you wanted to stay, you may still stay and listen for the recording. <laughs> 